Welcome back to Collider Jedi Council, and it is the 40-year anniversary of Star Wars, and we're going live right now for you guys. I'm Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, a.k.a. Harloff Minor, a.k.a. excited that it is the 40-year anniversary of New Hope. And what a council we have today. First, the Grand Moff Nemiroff herself, Perry Nemiroff. Hey, guys. So happy to be here and celebrate the 40th and to celebrate a live show. Pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoy. Joining us on this live extravaganza, it's John Solo. Mr. Jeremy Johns is here. Here I am, and I'm ready to talk Star Wars. i got my blue milk sprinkled with some death sticks. Let's do it. Very nice. Glad you're not hangry anymore. Mm. Right next to him, it is the one, the only, Kylo Ken. Hello, sir. Hey, how you doing? Happy Tal Day, everybody, and happy birthday, Star Wars. Glad to be here. All right. So if you just, if, first of all, if you're joining us live, thank you. Welcome and happy anniversary to all of you guys, all you Star Wars fans. That's why we're here, right? So we have a lot of cool things going on in the world of Star Wars, and a lot dropped. A lot of news happened, and we're going to start with... Star Wars movie news. Everything in the world of Star Wars that relates to the movies. And boy, do we get a... Just this week alone, Ken, pretty strong stuff happening in The Last Jedi. What's going down? Yeah, uh, as we look at our friends at Star Wars News Net site uh, to take all the stories, put them in one place for me to look at, we've got the Vanity Fair. It's a Star Wars tradition dating back to the days of The Phantom Menace when the uh, Vanity Fair photos uh, gave us a preview of that wonderful movie, The Last Jedi photos taken by Annie Leibovitz came out and uh, uh, Vanity Fair's David Camp also got to sit down and talk with the cast. We got some morsels. We got four covers coming out and we are, we're starting to learn a little bit about episode eight, Christian. I mean, I think this is going to cover the majority of this show. There's, there was a <laughs> lot of stuff. I'm not even kidding. There's a lot of stuff in here that was just incredible and we can all take bits and moments of what we want to talk about and I'm sure we'll cover a lot of this. Um, the thing that got me emotionally, obviously, was all the stuff that, with Carrie Fisher. I mean, all of it. The thing, again, that I always bring up, being a parent myself, that shot of her with Billy Lord, I mean, it was hard to, to look at, but I still wanted to look at it because it's such a sweet picture, and it's just, it's, it's everything that you heard when you're at Star Wars Celebration, hearing the, the way that she talked about her mom and the way that people just saw her. The... It, and deservingly so, a lot of this piece was a tribute to Carrie Fisher. A lot of it was. So I liked hearing the encouragement that she gave to Boyega and to Daisy Ridley and passing on that knowledge and the relationship she had, obviously, with Mark Hamill and, and seeing all those pictures of them together. So that obviously was something that was one of the big standouts to me. Um, the thing that I want to get into and talk Star Wars speculation and things of that nature, the first thing that we're going to do here is let's start with Benicio Del Toro. Um, one thing that I did get and i don't sometimes i think people he, just hear what they want to hear yes. inside of things oh, yeah. every time i've talked about uh benicio del toro i've said i don't necessarily think this is the case because i think that it would be fun to think that he's benicio uh, that he's ezra miller or you know Bridger. ezra miller maybe he's ezra miller and he's the flash maybe he's the flash thank you ezra ezra bridger maybe he's ezra they talked about maybe there's there's other things that he could be and right away people tweet afterwards because pablo hidalgo said it's, it's not the case and they said yeah, yeah your theories and speculation stop with the silly thing boop, boop, boop. and it's like i still think if you look if you zoom into his face there's a scar there do i think that he's ezra bridger no i do not do I think that DJ could possibly mean Dark Jedi? Yes, I do. Um, inside of what Ryan Johnson says, he's like, that's not his name. They don't even name him. He's like, but when you see him, you'll know what it means. If they don't name him throughout the whole thing, then how are we going to know what it means? I think it's Dark Jedi. I think that would be a great way to kind of explore that. But, Jeremy, you hear these things. What do you think? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I love the fact that you touched on the the picture of Billy Lord and Carrie Fisher. You know, it's just like well, the importance of family above above our entertainment is uh, first and foremost. So I'm glad. I mean, I, I agree with you. That picture is, it's a beautiful thing that you're like, ah, and you get all the feels and you want to look away, but you're always going to look back. Uh, as for Benicio del Toro, I agree. In this world where, like I've, like I've said, and you and I have talked about, I, I don't think it's going to be as black and white as it has been. I think there's going to be dark Jedi. I think right. there's going to be force users that's like, I don't, I don't conform to any of the little religions out there of the force. You know, I'm my own person. I'm my own guy. The fact that his initials coincidentally are DJ, which could mean dark Jedi. I mean... That's like, oh, his name is SL. Is it right. Sith Lord? It's just SL. Like, why? You know what? Why is his name DJ? It could be uh, Derek Jones. It very well could be, but I, I, I don't think it is. Star Wars has always had little nuggets of clues that they, they drop out there. They've always had the little, like, no, oh, it's 
what would the, the trailer of Attack of the Clones? It's it's a trailer called Black Eyes. It's like sure is. It's right. the Attack of the Clones right. trailer. That's totally what it is. Uh, are we talking about all the pictures, like the Vanity Fair cover? Whatever. I mean, if you want to bring something else up in anything, the pictures or anything you read in the actual article that you that that stood out to you, go, go ahead. You know bring what it. I love. You know yeah. what I love. What do you got? Is that cover that it shows Kylo Ren, Hux, and uh, Phasma? Yeah. None of them are wearing masks. Now this is interesting to me because I I would have totally thrown this. I would have been like, don't do that. Don't. I, I want them to have masks. But you see that scene in the trailer where Kylo Ren's mask is busted up on the ground. Right. It's shattered. And you don't know why. And so now we see him without a mask. What's the point of him having a scar if he wears a mask and covers it up? I don't think Kylo Ren's really going to wear his mask all that much in this movie. I agree with you. I don't um, think so either. And that would be interesting if Phasma doesn't either. Because really, we didn't get a lot of Phasma in the last movie. So if we get more Phasma with a face, I think that would make up for lost time with Phasma. Well, you know, it'll make her more of a human being that mm -hmm. we, we can kind of gravitate to. So that's the big thing for me was when I saw the cover, I was like, how many masks are there going to be in this <laughs> movie and how many, many or not, so now I have to speculate about all that. So Perry, any of the things that we've talked about that you want to also touch on? Anything new that you heard, saw, okay. or stood out? First, for the things that you've already touched on before, I will echo what you what you guys both said about that photo because mm -hmm. it, it is one of those things where it breaks my heart to look at it, but I, I can't stop looking yeah, at it. Beautiful. Same thing with that photo that you see on that side of the lower <laughs> third, that one, and the cover of her. I mean, what, what a smart, respectful, powerful thing to do that, to give... Princess Leia, her own Vanity Fair cover. And there's something about that image and just the way she's standing there that makes that character feel so, so powerful. I think there was no better way to highlight her in this in this spread, on that cover. It was, all the photos are just absolutely beautiful, but those were definitely the most striking. With the mask thing, I'm just excited to see Phasma without a mask. Because right. you don't cast Gwendolyn Christie as this character and then, you know, ha have her relegated to the kind of material that she got right. in... In Force Awakens, because it's yeah, everyone knows they didn't use Phasma as well as we all would have hoped, especially with the push with the toy line stuff. Her not having a mask, I think, could be the key to finally turning Phasma into a character. Yeah. And we are getting that book, so I'm looking forward to first reading that and then hopefully seeing her without the mask in Last Jedi. Um, the Del Toro stuff, yeah, I. I'm starting to, I understand why people think Dark Jedi, but at the same time, I have a feeling that anything anyone is coming up with within hours of this spread mm -hmm. being released is probably not going to be what it is. And even though it would be cool for him to be a Dark Jedi, whatever you know that would mean particularly, it, it's too on the nose. It's too on the nose, and I think it's going to bother me if that winds up being the reveal. I just like the idea of having a character that has no name, I mean, that's that's something really interesting to me that also suggests that he is going to possibly have a role in the next film. And, you know, by not giving him a name and then what giving him a name could change the way we look at him going forward. I, I like that. And I mean, I have to highlight Laura Dern because yeah. she is a I, Jurassic Park fan. She is one of my favorite actresses. And just recently I got obsessed with Big Little Lies. I thought she was great in it. And, you know, seeing seeing her a little more like regal and ritzy looking makes me think a little bit about Big Little Lies and, and how well she played that kind of role. So I really think that that's going to translate well here. And yet again, another striking image. I like the choice to, you know, shoot her from behind to highlight what, what exactly she's wearing because that makes her different in her stance stand out from every other photo that we saw. Ken, so what's yeah. standing out here? And do you think with DJ, mm -hmm. let's start with DJ here, and then I want to hear your other thoughts. I know you, you and I actually talked a, a lot about this last night. Um, do you, A, think the Dark Jedi thing is possible? B, do you th still think that uh, Ezra Bridger is possible? What do you think about uh, DJ here? Uh, I don't think he's Ezra. Okay. Uh, I don't think he is a Dark Jedi. Not a bad guess, though, there. I think it's uh, something we're still going to see. Number one, that does look like his Heineken ads, right, Jeremy? You were saying that oh, before. Oh, absolutely. He doesn't even know he's being filmed right <laughs> he now. Does, right. Yeah. He's um, like, hi, guys, what are you doing I about like, Littergirl? I like the mystery of it, though. He, he very well could be. Uh, I guess I guess what I hear you say or think, you know, prognosticate maybe Dark Jedi, I don't want him to pull out a blade and be like, this is what I've been on. I just, maybe someone who's been like, yeah, I used to be that stuff, but I didn't care about that anymore. Right. Now I'm this. We, we, he's he's kind of got a scandal vibe to him, and that's what they're going to set setting him up to be. Uh, but I like the mystery, and you're right, Perry. I think we'll see him in episode nine. Um, the, the Carrie Fisher stuff is great, obviously, but uh, I 
really, of all the stuff, I am drawn to the Canto Bite Casino stuff. Hmm. Uh, what I loved about it, I love what Ryan Johnson's saying, is we're, we're so often on these faraway planets made of sand, made of snow, made of uh, forests and trees, and um, now we're going into the upper crust of the galaxy. Now we're going into the, as he called them, the rich a-holes that uh, are, 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 you know, that we the high levels of Coruscant, but now it's this different planet, and I just think that's a great set piece uh, idea, man. Going around a casino like it's Monte Carlo, James Bond. I think that's a good thing, too, because I think that we have seen, I mean, again, one of the biggest criticisms for Force Awakens is that it was just like a rehash of stuff that we've yeah. seen already, too. And, and I'm a big fan of Force Awakens, but I completely understand that gripe. I do. There's Jakku is similar to Tatooine. A lot of the things that we have seen, stuff that we had seen before, a lot of these worlds. So what I re was really intrigued by in this article was hearing that Ryan Johnson not only directed this thing, but he's sole credit on, on writing this whole thing, too. And and it's got a it's got a Hunger Games kind of look to it at, at points, and that's not necessarily don't think it's just a bad thing because you're just like Hunger Games at this point when it was first announced, it's the books are really good, but people were just after a little bit because they, they started to kind of fall off. Yeah. They got like a little bit of a stink to them on the mm -hmm. last one anyway. But I think that the look does fit, especially knowing once again that Ryan Johnson had a lot to do or had a lot of input with Claudia Gray's novel Bloodline. He's into the politics of Star Wars. He's going to show a lot of the, this side. And that doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that these casinos and stuff, too, are going to be, or, or these politics are going to be on Coruscant. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get that elite, that, that kind of, the politics of what Leia was going through in Bloodline and watching what's going to happen next after the destruction that happens in The Force Awakens. How is the Resistance going to come back? What are they going to do? Who's their leadership? I think you're going to find all that stuff out. It's also interesting inside of this article to hear, you know, that... They were, they were really pushing towards, and we all speculated on this, Leia was going to have a very prominent role in Episode Nine because she even joked about it. She's like, Han was kind of front and center in Seven. Luke's going to be front and center in Eight, which is what we all thought. She's like, I want to be front and center in Nine. And they say she was going to be. Hearing this, Ken, how do you think they're going to handle Nine? Are they? I mean, I know they kind of touched on it a little bit, but are they going to... Are we going to recast, or are we just going to do a whole bunch of different storytelling here? In terms of uh, you know recasting, I still think that's a possibility. And as crazy as it sounds, it's it's actually very respectful to the character of Princess Leia because mm -hmm. that is a character that needs to be seen to the end. I'd hate to have some quick uh, ha brushing of the hand off screen. But again, that's a hard sell for a lot of people, I understand, as it should be, because Carrie Fisher is Princess Leia. Right. Uh, in terms of in-story, I think there's some things set up in... Uh, I'm behind by an issue, but the Poe Dameron uh, comic number 14 is one of the best things in new Star Wars canon, if you haven't had a chance to check it out. Why do you say that? Um, it, it, it focuses on uh, the aftermath, the death of one of the characters of uh, Black Squadron, which is Poe's X-Wing unit, mm -hmm. goes into that funeral. Uh, there's some great stuff between him and, and General Leia, and basically, I, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but, but it directly addresses General Leia not being with us at one point. She says that. She talks about it because it's a funeral. She pulls Poe aside and she says, you know, the stuff you were saying because he's Poe's kind of quoting Yoda essentially going, you know, we're all luminous beings, you know, right, not right. just crude, crude matter. Um, and she says quite, and one of the, it's a heartbreaking panel, just like one day I'll be luminous too. She, it's setting us up as fans that this character won't necessarily be here. And it also really touches on Poe as a potential leader of the resistance as someone that that people can get behind it really builds a co po character yeah. well right. um uh laura dern's character is uh, mm -hmm. in the resistance as far as we know vice admiral Emmeline holdo in uh so there you have another leader right there so we'll see if it sh if big little lies which we mm -hmm. watched if that is any indication i think she's gonna have the same type of role in uh, ish with her being kind of combative as low instead of Reese Witherspoon, it's going to be Carrie Fisher. I am. I mean, I'm hoping that that's the case because, like I said before, she was great on that show, and it's she walks that fine line of you kind of hating her character but liking and understanding her thought process, which is a big deal. With I mean, we're going to talk about it later with Battlefront. We're gonna we're always talking about it with every single character, especially when we start to explore uh, Empire perspective. When we start to explore what life is like for the super wealthy that might not have to deal with war quite like some of these other characters do. There's ways to explain that and for you to understand why they think the way that they do. And I think that's going to be really important here with her character. But another thing that, that I wanted to highlight, mm -hmm. oh, wait, br briefly going back to Carrie Fisher recasting. Um, 
I, I'm still standing by the fact that I just don't want that to happen. If, if they announce that that is the case, I have full trust in Lucasfilm and everyone involved, and I think they're going to do it in a respectful way. But going through that, the David Camp AMA, he, he had said, I suspect, though I don't know for sure, that Leia will not appear in Episode Nine, and her absence slash death will be alluded to in some elegant way. That, that, I think, is what I prefer. But then again, I trust them. So if they go another route, I'm sure they're going to do it well. The other little bit of information that really caught my eye was the stuff with Kelly Marie Tran's character oh, right. and Poe. Yeah. And then this, sister, new, yeah. this other character, yeah, Paige. Paige. So the, cool, the two cool things about Paige is, one, apparently Poe is training her. One of my favorite parts of the Aftermath books is Snap's relationship with... Um, Wedge. We, with Wedge and the training with that. And... You know, Snap is, I, I assume he's going to have some sort of role. So I just wonder if he's going to come into play, what that training relationship is going to be like. And then the fact that she has a sister, that Paige is her sister. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, pa Paige is training to fly. She's working maintenance. I'm just curious to see how that yeah. affects their relationship. Now, as for uh, Princess Leia, here, here's an interesting thing. Now, I'm not calling Leia the Emperor, but if you look at Empire Strikes Back and mm -hmm. A New Hope, the Emperor was out there, but you never saw the Emperor, right? So do you think they would do a thing in the movie where Episode Nine Leia's not in Episode Nine? Like Paul she, Walker style in, in, in uh, Fast and Furious. Uh, yeah, well, she's still out there though. But she, like, what if it doesn't concentrate on uh, the Republic and the politics of the Resistance? Let's say it's happening elsewhere, and it's very centric on uh, Luke, Ray, Kylo Ren, uh, Snoke, that whole thing, and they wrap up Leia in a book somewhere. It's like this is Leia's last story. And this is what was happening in tandem, parallel to Episode Nine. Would you be down with that? I think that it would be interesting to do. I mm -hmm. think that that would be very interesting. Because that's the beauty of what Star Wars has the ability to right, do everything. through their stories. Is this was our, kind of her last hurrah, and here's the story of how it happened. I do think that's something that would be interesting, but I don't think it'll happen because I think that Episode Eight, and that's also why I think we can't just jump right away and go, well, I don't know if we, we should do that because we don't know the way that the story is going to pan out. Yeah. If the story pans out to where you're left going, well, what happens? Mm -hmm. How are we going to do that? Like, there's Sometimes you just have to do that. Like You just have to because depending on, but but the flip side of that is they could they could shoot this into a way, like you're saying, there's enough to say, okay, that they should do her death class classy mm -hmm. or do the exit of the character classy and we're like okay or I mean not necessarily this is the, the stupid version of it but if it's just in the crawl and they yeah, tell you kind of what happens and the way that a way to fill us in to let us know something but it just depends on how eight plan yeah. pans out because if eight pans out to where she still has an arc it's too hard to just say now we got to scrap. We, yeah, right, we're just right. gonna say, you know, she she didn't make it. Something happened. Then it's like, well, you built all that stuff up. I think that the fans right now, of course, there's an emotional response. She's one of the most beloved actresses, not just characters, actresses of all, of all time. And when you hear that, your initial response is to say, nope, can't recast her, can't do it. No, 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 no. But you haven't seen what's happened in eight. Mm -hmm. When eight pans out, then you should say to yourself, do you think that it's a thing that they should explore? I understand. It's it's tricky, man. It ain't easy. Yeah. It's, and that is what I mean specifically when, when we talk about respect to the character of Princess Leia. This is someone who means so much to Star Wars fans of all, but little girls in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond. And, and, and if Princess Leia slash General Leia has an arc that finishes where she is more powerful or it becomes a Jedi or, or we to cut it off. I understand again, we keep saying it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I hate to be in those meetings, but that's what I mean by being respectful to the character. We might have to, to deal with a uncomfortable recasting so that the character Leia Organa uh, of Alderaan sees to its, uh, sees the character to its correct end. All right. So, anything else as far as that stands out that we missed? I mean, Kylo obviously has got this, the, the the scar looks a no little mask. bit no mask. The scar's a little bit uh, better placed. Ray, uh, I, hearing one last thing is that Mark Hamill still loves throwing those shots. Mm. <laughs> he loves throwing those shots. He still says, "I and he, I love Mark Hamill more than anybody else." And I think that uh, he does kind of rehash the same things when he says things because I've heard him say that story about the I told Ryan I fundamentally disagree with everything yeah. he said that at celebration yeah. he said he loves to say that stuff yeah. but he also likes to say well, I was wrong last time and um, he's a creative dude and he wants yeah. to put his thoughts out there I 
still think it's very refreshing to see what Ryan Johnson is going to do with this overall franchise. I might agree with Mark Hamill that that the choices are wrong for what he made with Luke, but right now I'm willing to give him the shot. Yeah, I watched Looper about a week and a half ago. Like for the first time in a while, I hadn't seen Looper in a while, and you watch Looper, and I'd never been more excited for episode eight. Right? Like you see, just I mean, just the 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 shooting, the cinematography, the storytelling, the rainmaker. Mm-hmm. You're like, there's a force user in Looper, essentially, That's and true. and you think about it, yeah. you're like, what he can do, the way it looks when this dude unleashes power. I've never been more excited. What can I say? I got more amped for episode yeah. eight just because of Looper. Watch Looper if you if it's been a while since you've seen it. Watch it. All right, so I think we've covered pretty much everything so far in that particular uh, article, but then there's a little bit more, right, Ken? Yeah, I do, but we should focus on the covers because uh, this yes, is actually, uh, this is from Vanity Fair today. Vanity Fair debuts the cast of its follow-up, uh, The Last Jedi, on four different covers, marking the first time we've released alternate Star Wars covers, so race on out and get them, and they are going to be, it's a summer issue of Vanity Fair, and it'll be on newsstands in New York and Los Angeles on May 31st, nationally June 6th. You can, of course, get this stuff online. Uh, um, but it's important. These are great covers. You mentioned uh, Perry, the, the Princess Leia, General Leia one, um, the, the the evil uh, side, the, the good side. And what is very, we should highlight, uh, Kelly Marie Tran being on this cover. She's the first Asian female to ever be on the cover of Vanity Fair. So ever. Uh, that is what representation wow. on Star Wars does matter because that's why this is happening. Uh, far too late, but, uh, you know. It's a good thing. That is really great. I mean, the overall, the, I'm loving the, the covers. I think that great. the thing that they talked about with, and a lot of people were talking about the Princess Leia. It's like, oh, well, she looks kind of, that looks a little ominous. And maybe that's, that's maybe she goes to the dark side. Nah, I think it's just, yeah. that's, she's going to be dealing a lot in politics, man. That's a, that's a, that's a politician's outfit. That's a, she's going to be dealing oh, yeah. with that stuff. She's going to, she represents, you got to remember where, I, even though it's handled, not well in The Force Awakens at all. It's like, oh, all these planets blow up, and, and a lot of the, uh, who's that guy? It doesn't matter. He blows up, too. <laughs> and when you find out, when you read all the extended stuff that they've released in canon in the, in the encyclopedias and in the, uh, in the novels, a lot of prominent figures went out. And yeah. the po- politics in general and the government in general is going to be in disarray, and she is the leader of this resistance that the New Republic did not want. They did not want her to go off and do this thing. She ran. She was going to run for office. A scandal broke out. They found out she was Leia's daughter. She didn't run for this thing. She started the resistance, and now the resistance is on top. So she's essentially going to be representing this as the leader. So I think that's what that outfit is. She's in a strong position of power right now, Absolutely. and she's representing, and she's coming off the fact that her husband, her, they're still married. Her husband was, is, is gone now, and all these different things are happening. She's going to have a very big role, and she's a very prominent figure in all of the galaxy. You know, so, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, yeah, that's, that's, but that, that's an interesting thing that I think about, but I'm, I'm like, eh, you know, they're never going to address that. So they did address the fact that word got out that Leia was Vader's daughter, and everyone was like, sorry. Like, no, you're out. That happened? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know why. That's just well, really was, cool to me. It was, it was necessarily you're out, but it was... It was it was just a big scandal. Like right. it was, it, it was it did, very. You want to hide that if you're late. Like I would hide that. I'd be like, no it, one's knowing that. It felt like politics, right? Like, like the way that it, the whole thing, the way that it was revealed, the dirty stuff behind it, like the way that it, uh, it was hidden for a very long time. The fact that they were wanting to go after Luke at one point, and then other people on their side were like, no, you "Leave Luke alone." I think Luke's done enough for us. So you just you don't go after Luke. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to read in Bloodline that you get. I think that people always ask me, I get the question all the time on Twitter, is, I want to start with novels. Which one do I start with? It's not necessarily because it's the best, because I do think that Lost Stars and even Lords of the Sith, I think would rank over uh, Bloodline. But I think because of The Last Jedi, I think that I would start with Bloodline because it is the closest in timeline, six years before the events. It's going to play in very heavily to this type of stuff. So that's the one that I would start with. Bloodline came out after Force Awakens, and I'll tell you that after reading Bloodline, if you go back and watch Force Awakens, you will look at Leia in a little bit of a different light, and I think it's important to read that before we see her in this new movie, because it goes back to what I said before. I understand why people look at that cover image and they are thinking, you know, dark, maybe evil, but when I looked at it, I saw, like, strong, powerful, poised, in charge, and maybe the darkness would come with the mentality of, like, I know I can't do right by everybody, but sometimes I have to do something that is maybe, you know, a little wrong or that some people might not agree with to benefit the greater good. That's that's kind of yeah. how I read that image. But overall, when you look at these covers, I don't want to knock EW. It's just that 
recently entertainment i used to love entertainment weekly growing up where i would grow up and wait for that to come out just so i could keep the covers because i just yeah. love the cover designs and lately it almost feels like copy and paste of uh of photos or or press material coming from the studio it's like the one that's coming to mind is the guardians of the galaxy one where you know those those characters are striking no matter what they're doing but it did feel almost like a copy and paste job this just goes to show when you have a really talented photographer, one of the most talented out there, and she just get. I mean, there's really not all that much to these when you look at the background. It is the look on their face. It's the pose yeah. they're making. I mean, she is just incredible. I, I love all of these. Well, it's a character also that she pulls out that we yeah. know because you, you get a lot from exactly, it represents everything that we're about to see and everything we saw from episode seven. I think something else that we should touch on with the, both Finn and uh, and Poe and then Rose together. Still has a jacket. Well, well, not only does he have the jacket, uh, Poe's got the Han Solo gear going yeah, on. Yeah. That's Empire, baby. Yeah. Yeah, that is Empire. But I also think that one of the things we didn't touch about with Finn, I also thought there was something very strong in that Vanity Fair thing that we didn't touch about, and, I, and I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about it, was that Finn, uh, John Boyega, again, the strength that he got from Carrie Fisher was he was, and and deservingly so, he was, he was shook up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But there were some, a lot of ignorant, dumb people out there that were saying there shouldn't be a black stormtrooper in, uh, in Star Wars, and they're just idiots. That and same guy tweets you a lot, too. I'm sure he does. Uh, and and it's, it's the fact that he went to her, and she's just like, who cares? Boo effing who? Yeah. Do you? And that and and you can tell that he he took that he he took that advice and he ran with it and I think that having him back having him with Rose they're gonna they're gonna have a thing I think they're gonna, they're gonna be a love interest right there and I think you're gonna get that classic Star Wars adventure the that adventure's going on that adventure's going on and that yeah. one's going on yeah. so Ken sorry you were saying uh, I was just saying uh, I don't know what was I gonna say oh I was gonna say to Perry's point uh, it's, it's a almost off topic, but this is why I do sometimes get sad that print is slowly, slowly drifting away because yeah. I used to collect magazine covers, Rolling Stones, everything mm -hmm. in the Vanity Fairs. I still have every one of the Star Wars Vanity Fairs going back to 99, and they are, in their own way, pieces of art, and Annie, Annie Leibovitz has been doing that for years, so that these are these are very, I, I'm racing out that morning to all the different newsstands to get all four. Yeah, um, I would like to say too, and someone else just acknowledged us in the live chat. We don't normally do the show oh, live. Right. Um, yeah. I'm gonna uh, totally agree here. This is one of the most positive, loving YouTube chats I have ever seen. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations, yeah. Good job, guys! I mean, that, this is. I mean, it's <laughs> this is no small it's the 40 year anniversary of Star Wars, and having I, you know, I've banned a couple ball bags, but for the most part, it, it's been really, it's been really good. Um, that is also why I like live. I can ban a lot of people. Yeah, nice. It's good. So, all right, what's next? Well, you know, you, uh, I, did, oh. I did want to touch on Kylo Ren's outfit. Please, if you look please. at it, he has a legit cape now. He doesn't have rags. He doesn't have the the, the weird hood right. and the rags. He has a legit cape. I don't think his helmet and mask would go with that cape if you just look at the aesthetic of it. So I do think that we're going to get a lot of maskless people. I don't know. I just, I just I think you're right. see his outfit is, I like the fact that he has a cape. What can I say? I like capes. Well, I think capes one of the good. reasons, too, with the mask, the mask was to show in the first one that he had this kind of obsession with his grandfather. Yeah. He's becoming his own guy now. And he's and, and Vader also had it because Vader needed that mask to keep him alive. He doesn't need it. Yeah. Um I think we'll still see masked people in this, but I don't I also don't want to see Gwendolyn Christie masked unless she's in battle. I want to see her more. I want to she's one of my favorite things in, in Game of Thrones. I want to see her more, learn more about her. So, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think they need to all be masked. Yeah, you know what else about it is I always thought he had the mask because if people saw that he was this just normal dude, they'd be like, uh, why do we take orders from you? So right. in this one, if he is more powerful and can back his stuff up, I don't think he needs yeah. the mask. He can just kill thugs. All right, Ken, what's next? Uh, well, we got the author of this uh, Vanity Fair article, David Camp. He sat down with Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, there are some experts from this that we might want to talk about. Uh, some stuff about Kennedy, interesting things I, I take away, and I'll let you do a run with this question. That, uh, uh, you know, they're talking about the future of the, the franchise, the saga films. And I like, she says, does this, we ask ourselves this question, but basically what she's saying, does the saga extend beyond the nine movies that George envisioned? We're having discussions about that right now. Uh, it's an interesting note to me because I don't know if 789 or what George yeah. envisioned. Um, but she's, uh, she, when asked if you choose to put the soccer films on ice for a while, are you committed to continuing on with the story films? The standalone films, she says absolutely, and then talks again about how they are trying to decide. And there will be announcement and a decision for the 2020 standalone that they're going to make by June, which might mean 
you announce it at D23, as we've been talking about They said here. June, though? I mean, she we're, says, we're looking uh, at July we here. We will make a decision. Uh, yes, we have definitely identified it, but yes, we have a couple things right now that we're circling, circling, and we'll make a decision between the two pretty shortly. It's probably for 2020, and we will make a decision by June. So they make the decision by June with an announcement probably in July. So, yeah. uh, I mean, that's what we've been speculating on this show for a long time, and I think that this is the beauty of what they're able to do. There's nothing that says that they have to do episode... 10, 11, and 12 in right. between all these things. They have all right. these different stories and places they can tell. And I, and I, it would actually go against my particular um, reasoning of two films a year because I think what you could do, that they're, gonna, they're starting to try to get back into that May spot as we see episode, um, what we're hitting episode, uh, both Solo and episode nine are both going to hit in May, at least for now. And I think that what you do is that you allow these stories to build. Let's say it is an Obi-Wan movie, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if there's going to be one movie a year, then what you could do is you could do Obi-Wan every other year. If you wanted to do a second, I, I think Obi-Wan will be one particular movie. But if there was something, let's say Old Republic became a trilogy. Now you have the real estate to say every other year is going to be the Old Republic saga film. Or you, there's, there's more to do there. And then you can jump back a few years, few years later. I think it's like... What you could do is by taking a break from the saga films is that when episode, let's say Ray, we assume Ray will probably survive, right? Let's say one scenario is that she ends the saga on the dark side. Okay. Let's just say that that's, I don't think that'll happen, but let's just, let's just say that happens. And she's going to be, what, 27, 25, 26 or something when, when this thing ends. In 10 years from now, if you're able to, you get Daisy Ridley back at 35 or 40 mm -hmm. to do episode a 10, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool as long yeah. as you keep on with these other stories that you're getting us invested in. So it makes sense to me. I love the sound of that. Just Thank because you. I'm, well, also clearly we see the effect when you bring back the original cast members so many years later. It, it really is something special when you have the luxury to be able to do something like that where you don't have to, you know, age them up and, and recast in the story and you can bring back the original actors. Are we still talking about the article or the AMA? Uh, well, it's the article and, and it, it both. Okay, you sure. Stuff what, yeah. I, you know what? You went yeah, through the AMA. So I did. What did yeah. you get out of there? Well, the I highlighted three things. One, one of the things that I just liked the way that it was described is he said Kathleen Kennedy described the natural arc of each trilogy as setup, conflict, resolution. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to boil it down to something so simplistic like that because I'm sure there's other elements beyond those those descriptive words. But at the same time. I, I kind of like when things are neat and organized and I like the way that I can process and I like what kind of path that leads me down in terms of trying to predict what's going to come. And then with the with the announcement of the uh, the next standalone movie, they she, I, she just said it was going to come soon. And we know or, you know, we've been speculating long enough that it's probably going to be around D23 time. The one question that really got me was uh, he said, I asked Ryan Johnson about Snoke. Who slash what is he? And Ryan was fairly upfront in saying that Snoke is not a character he particularly gets into in The Last Jedi. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's good. Color me shocked. Okay. I, I'm, okay I'm surprised. Okay that we don't get okay much Snoke. You keep him a little bit more, a little bit more. Maybe you actually see him in person. I think we're going get to some, get some practical stuff, you know, circus walking around in a Muppet costume. I don't know. But I, I'm okay. Keep Snoke for nine. Like they did with the Emperor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, in something like this, you want an answer to something in this movie, and then you're going to get an answer to something else in nine. So, whether or not I, I feel like we're going to find out more about Ray in episode eight, and then more about Snoke in episode nine. If it wasn't Ray in this one, it would be vice versa. But you're mm -hmm. gonna—I mean, you don't want it all in one movie. Like, here are a bunch of answers, so there's not as much intrigue by episode nine. I do like what you're saying about the possibility of the whole saga ending with Rey turning bad. Because at this point, in the in the prequels, the most intriguing thing when they were coming out and even looking back was the fact that it's like, oh, this is also an Emperor backstory. We get we mm -hmm. find out how this guy kind of took over, you know? So I always love the concept and prospect of something possibly flipping something on its head because we thought like, all this time, like, oh, it's a hero story. Now it's actually the the genesis of this very bad person who's rising to super dark power i would find that interesting but it's the star wars universe like you were saying the possibilities are endless there's no obligation to come right. out with something every year um you could wait every two years or whatnot it's kind of like 
Star Wars has hit a point that had never been before, where imagine the Silmarillion and Lord of the Rings literally just opened up. It's like, you know, like, because it was always Lord uh-huh. of the Rings, right. and everyone knew that was Lord of the Rings. But imagine a world where it's like, well, now you have the funding and the fan backing to take any story in the Silmarillion and make that a trilogy. Let's just do yeah. that. You know, that's where Star Wars is right now. And I love that. It's just like, I mean, pick that, that, that. I'm with you on Old Republic stuff. I want to see more Old Republic. I think there are storylines in uh, the prequel era that could be I war agree. epics. Yeah. Like, I, I would love to see something about a couple Jedi or a couple Jedi who survived Order 66 trying to get away and mm-hmm. then Vader just cuts them down by the end or uh, a couple of clone troopers that didn't actually follow through. Let's say clone troopers that killed the Jedi and then they're like, we just killed our friends. Why did we do that? You know well, what I mean? Well, like, this is messed up. You get a lot of that in the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Clone Wars series yeah, for yeah, sure. With Rex and, and all them, yeah. and, and even in Rebels now, when you have with Rex, there was sort of like that chip. Yeah. I love that chip thing. That it's think, amazing. Yeah, it was really good. But yes, I'd love to see some more stuff ex- exploration there. But I saw, you know, one comment who, who wrote, uh, well, no, 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 guys. Snoke is just Snoke. And ju- I, I, I agree. That's not what we're talking about. We're, yeah, what, we're yeah. Ta- what we're talking about is well, the who fact... Is it? Where did he come from? Like, where? how did he learn all this stuff? Right, because I still, like, as we talked about in certain things that happen in canon, um, I totally agree. He is going to be a different character altogether, but let's find out more about him. Not necessarily in The Last Jedi. If, if I agree with Ken. I think that they set up it, it, the Palpatine pretty well and that he had a stronger storyline in Return of the Jedi, which is one of the best parts of Return of the Jedi. And I think you can do the same thing with Snoke. Yeah. And going to what Jeremy's saying, too, I think that this story here is more about Luke and Ray. Mm-hmm. That's what this story is going to be. It's going to be about Luke, what's going on with Luke. Right. I want to find out more about what's been going on with Luke than I do with Snoke. And I really like yeah. the character of Snoke, but I'm okay waiting until uh, Colin Trevorrow tells me about that and Ryan Johnson can tell me about what's going on with Ray and what's going on with Luke. Mm-hmm. All right, Ken, what's next? Let's move on to the Han Solo film, and light spoilers are ahead. So, Cody, you can put that graphic <gasps> over my so face that spoiler anytime you want. Oh, it's not on my face. All right, that's good. Uh, we got our uh, yeah, TMZ. They have released some uh, leaked photos. We're calling these leaked photos because they are. Well, they're sneaky espionage photos from the Han Solo set. We get to see Alden Ehrenreich, uh, our first official, unofficial glimpse, of course, of him as Han Solo. We got like a guy that looks like H. John Benjamin in some kind of uh, rain smock. And uh, then we got a cavalcade of weird, funky-looking space vehicles. Uh, these, of course, got wheels on them. Not going to be in the movie like that, but um, this is, what do you guys think? Christian, look at this. Our first look at that Han Solo hair. His hair's so much better. Like <laughs> it is, it's a silly thing to be concerned about, but uh, it, it's it's a much better '70s do than the last thing we saw in that in that cover. Was it Vanity Fair the other cover? Yeah, I don't think no, so. No. Whatever it was, but uh, EW, was that? yeah, I, I don't know. Everything else I'm seeing, I'm not going to start speculating. But he, he's a racer. Yeah, we know he's a racer. Uh, he he's he's going to try to win money. Yeah, that's probably something he's going to do also. Uh, but I the initial look, I want to see that first trailer. Man, I want to mm-hmm. see because that's what everybody's gonna be looking. They're gonna look for the sound. Is it gonna be like, oh, he's doing a ha- he's doing a Harrison Ford impression, right. or he's making it his his own? This is the toughest thing anyone's ever had to do in Star Wars <laughs> at anything. Like, there, there's even over Frank Oz, who made Yoda as strong as he was, and that the Empire Strikes Back fails. This is a this whole movie will fail from th- the first second. If you don't believe him as Han Solo, he's a very talented actor. I am rooting for him. I am rooting for this movie, and I can't wait to see it. And I'm liking the look so far. Um, Jeremy, what do you think? <laughs> it's really funny you say, say that about the hair, because I didn't even realize his hair was different in this one than the last picture. And the last picture wasn't actually... It was just the actors, right? So basically, he has, a, he has a wig and all that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in this one, so they made him look like a little more Han Solo. But you're not wrong. You are absolutely... I, ha- I there's no other scenario where another actor had to step into a role of someone who's so iconic in the movie world. This is just cinema in general. This person is the going actor to- and the character, right? Yeah. He has to take on what, what the most iconic smuggler of all time, 
in the most uh, acclaimed and beloved uh, franchise, one of the most acclaimed and beloved franchises of all time. It's not a task I would want. I hope it's a task he doesn't take lightly, but I hope the pressure doesn't get to him, you know, where he's just like, I got to make it my own. Right. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. You know, like, I, I don't think, I mean, he's not going to yeah. do that, absolutely, but it does show how when someone goes another way it's like it lost me entirely you right. know so he it is a thing it's a mix of he you don't want him to impersonate han solo you want him to make it his own but you want him to feel like han solo it is a weird the zone is about it's razor thin he has to hit this bullseye right there mm -hmm. if he can do it there will be star wars movies until the end of time and you know who did it well who river phoenix did it well mm -hmm. oh yeah indiana jones yeah, yeah river phoenix did it very well and it People don't really reference that as much, too, because right. yeah, mm -hmm. because the reason why was because you knew within 10 minutes when that was over, you're going to see yeah. Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot yeah. to be said about, I believe, when you go back, go back and watch Last Crusade. That's Indiana Jones. Like, mm -hmm. he, I mean, that's how great of an actor. River <laughs> Phoenix, but no, but he was. No, but it's he, more Indiana Jones than he was in Kingdom of the Crystal well, that, Skull. Like, that's absolutely that. true. You know, but, you know, you're not wrong, but, the, oh, Yoda fell. That's you're right. not wrong. I'm going to hold this guy because he's my boy. Uh, you're, you're not wrong at all, but the difference is there is a time gap between Indiana Jones and River Phoenix as, as there is like a three month or and four, a half. Well, it's like three <laughs> years. <laughs> right. or so. Yes, but absolutely. No, yeah, it's, not it's as that, much. It, they're giving us the Han Solo that we're familiar with. Yeah. However, we're not familiar with him yet. Right, right. That's, it's, that's, it's, that's the trick. It's a tough job. And, and this dude, uh, I mean, if he pulls it off, this will be one of the greatest things that someone out the gate is like, oh, I'm kind of new to this whole thing. Here we are. You yeah. know, so what do you think? I got a lot of faith in him, though. Yeah. I understand this is actor. a really, it, it's a big challenge, though. Yeah. It's not something where it's like, oh, you know, you got great act acting chops. It's a certain thing that you're going to pull it off because it's not just up to him. It's also up to the directors and everything right. around him. So it's going to be tough. But in terms of Alden Ehrenreich as an actor, I really mm -hmm. think that he's got a great shot to pull it off. In terms of the hair, that last photo was like a behind the scenes. We're chilling on set. Yeah, set yeah. Photo. It was behind the set. They were on. They were like in they're, the cockpit the of the set, Falcon. But they're not in costume yeah. or anything. So I wasn't he's judging his hair. Not in costume. Chewie is in full costume. He's yeah, the only he's one. He, he's wearing Lord a blue Miller button there. That's a yeah. real person. Chewie's a real yeah, person. I know, but Woody Harrelson is in a blue that's hoodie. True. That's true. I um, think Woody Harrelson should wear a blue hoodie as Han Solo's mentor. In terms of these leaked set photos. Photos. Y'all know how I feel about those. You don't like them? No, it just yeah. I, it drives me nuts. Yeah. I mean, I look at stuff like this, and what when I'm just thinking about oh, judging how he looks as Han Solo, seeing you know the vehicles around him, cool. But at the same time, one, it's leaked. It's not right. It's not the studio's intentions. It's not the filmmakers' intentions, and it does have an effect on you when it comes to movie release time. That you've seen this behind the scenes stuff that is kind of. I don't want to say it's going to ruin the magic, but behind the scenes stuff that's paparazzi style, it could ruin the magic a little bit. Whereas if Disney had released their own behind the scenes photos, I imagine they carefully pick and choose what the public sees. So, you know, cool. I'm excited for Han Solo. I wish these pictures just didn't exist. I don't, see, normally I don't, I, I agree with you, but I, I don't mind this particular one. I think, cause I, I think I, and there's certain times I think that leaks are proved. I think that sometimes when, when, things leak, the studios will shut them down fast and they all disappear all over the place. This isn't disappearing. It's it's popping up. It's not going anywhere. And I think that they want to show you a little bit of a look at them. I think sometimes the studios are like, all right. Sometimes they leak it when they really don't. There's really not much here that's giving away anything. So I think sometimes set leaks are done on purpose for marketing, and I think this could be one of those times. I might be wrong, but I, I, I think it's certainly possible. Well, I mean, in order for a studio to pull all the photos, it has to be a big studio. Disney's not that big. That's true. That's true. I mean, they're, they're kind of small. They're the little guy. Right. They probably don't have that yeah. long of a reach. So, I mean, that does matter. That's very true. Ken? Are, are you saying that in Hollywood sometimes publicists call outlets <laughs> or paparazzi and just say, oh, my client's just going to happen to be at this restaurant? You uh, said you, that. Uh, you said uh, that. I don't know. I, I just know confirmed it. All right. Um, uh, we want to leave some time here, Christian. So should we uh, We got more Han Solo stuff? Or you want to jump no, move in? No, move on unless you have anything you want no, to talk No, no. We got all some right. more leaked photos that uh, we all can agree that uh, it's nothing surprised. Han Solo's going to have some Imperial entanglements. So let's uh, maybe move on to canon. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to move on, guys. It is time for the segment that is simply called, What's the deal with canon? I mean, come on! 
It is everything happening in the world of Star Wars. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the movies, but it certainly ties into the movies. It is official Star Wars history, deemed by the story group and everyone who makes Star Wars Star Wars, comic books, video games, novels, shows. We're going to talk about it. Kenneth Napsakian, what do we got? Well, you got a couple things here about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Jeremy, you going to play it? I will play it. It's a different business model than the first uh, one. I've said it. They learned from the uh, they learned from the fan, I don't want to say backlash, but the fan um, consensus of the Just business a little model. bit of a little little backlash. Yeah, there, well, there was a lot yeah, of backlash, yeah, what yeah, can yeah. I say? But also Injustice 2 did the same thing. They're like, "Hey, you know what? We get it. Sorry about that. Here here's a, you know, well, not sorry about that. They they've always been pretty good about it. But mm -hmm. point is, game companies are learning that microtransactions are not the way to win the fans over. Give them the meat micro of microtransactions. Microtransactions. That's a technical term. That's what it is. Uh, well, EA has released a couple featurettes that uh, pertain to the story of uh, Battlefront 2 yes. and other worlds and I believe Christian these are things we saw at Star Wars Celebration. They were, yeah. Mistaken. So now uh, the public gets a little bit more details on uh, Inferno Squad and Eden Versio, uh, who was uh, the character played by, uh, uh, what's her name, Janina Gavankar. Perry? I don't know. Oh. I didn't remember. Oh, oh. but you're, you're she bad. normally does. And then I, I felt bad because <laughs> we sat next to her. What I'm excited yeah. about, actually, is that Jeremy and I, are, I will be, I think, I think, uh, can I talk about what we might be doing? What at, are we doing? <laughs> do we, have we talked about that yet? Potentially? I d I don't know well, we don't know yet. Well, now, now I think you have to kind of bring I'll, it up. I'll, I mean, look, we, what we're talking about, nothing's set in stone, but for Awesome Tacular, Jeremy's show on Verizon Go 90, which everybody should be watching. We talk about Star Wars every week on that show, and it's free. Just go there and watch it. There's a lot of cool stuff that goes on every week on that show. Jeremy and I are talking, considering, going to E3 to go and preview Battlefront and check out Battlefront and see what we can do there. So make sure you check out Jeremy's awesome tactical show to, to see that go down. Um, I'm looking forward to this game because of the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, that yeah. was my biggest concern and my biggest gripe with the last one is that I just stopped getting invested once I was, oh, this is really cool to see all these things and what's next? Nothing. All right. And I and plus the fact I stunk at the game. I don't mind <laughs> if I, 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 I don't mind if I, <laughs> yeah, matters. it does. I don't care if I stink at the game as long as because it, it's going to make me want to play it more as long as I can keep telling the story. I want to learn more about the story, so I'll stink up the joint and as long as I'll put it on easy in order to get to find out what happens inside of the, the universe. But you, you bring up a really good point. I don't mean to bring up Injustice 2 again, but I, they, they did such a good job in that game uh, making it to building a model to where you don't ever have to play multiplayer in order to binge this game for days upon days upon days. And that's kind of the key for me because I'm kind of a, a loser. And so I play games single player a lot. And so as long as the single player campaign is very involved, in depth, invested, and they have a story, right. that's really what I'm looking for. And the multiplayer element is, it should be an extra to a game like yeah. this. And so it looks like, hey, it has a story. We have actors. It's, you know, going on the Imperial side, excited for it. I do hope we get to play. I am so excited. Mm -hmm. I'm so damn excited for this game. And I have Christian's problem. I suck at Battlefront right now. <laughs> it's, I'm not putting enough time into it, I'll admit. I need to work harder. But when I went through a little game phase, I was more drawn to multiplayer and that kind of stuff. But hearing about the story mm -hmm. in this one, and especially seeing it in that featurette form. So between the two featurettes, the story one, I mean, crushes that other one. And it's not that the second one's bad. It's just... There, there's not all that much in that one to get me really hyped beyond... Because like, I think they even repeat some of the same material from that first one. But if you watch the story one, especially if you're like me and you like that Imperial uh, mind frame, and also bringing back, uh, bringing back uh, Lost Stars, because we always talk about it, this character is making me think that it could be like Sienna. And that's a character that... I mean, really, right after I read Lost Stars, that's kind of when I became an Empire sympathizer, really, because right, right. that character is built so damn well, and it is so intriguing to watch her, you know, just process all these terrible things that happen and kind of try to fit it into her her mind frame, which is all, I need to do this and this because I, I need to do right by the Empire and seeing what happens around her. And I don't necessarily know if this character is going to go down that same path or think about it the same exact way. But I want to see somebody else try to process all that, especially with her, her family having the Empire background, too. I can't wait for story. So someone else pointed out in the comments section here, and I agree with them. I think that Battlefront now is Battlefront 2 is doing what I wanted Battlefront 1 to do, and it is solely responsible, similar to what we were just talking about with On Solo. It is the first video game 
to well video i guess console game to take itself into the world of canon mm-hmm. because it, no other story mode has done that yet i know they had the one online game that that did it and that didn't really yeah. work out very well but this game is going to be the one that carries canon into the video game is that a big responsibility here ken absolutely it's something that quite frankly i'm slightly worried about yeah. um but not that it's gonna end up bad i think it looks great it looks cool but um you know i i too, sometimes whenever when the the, the box of star wars cereal is canon you kind of just you know i want to eat the cereal uh but i i I like the Inferno Squad. I think having that book by Christy Golden coming out at the same time will make it feel yeah. bigger than I just... Care so much more about that book now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and the visuals are cool. And, and as we know with the Empire, Perry, because I'm an Imperial sympathizer too, it's just the uniforms, you know, we like the way they look. The, that looks cool up there. So uh, I'm excited. But yeah, slightly... not Worry's not the word, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I, 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 do, I do love this comment. Uh, the rebels are just people who don't want to pay taxes, basically. <laughs> You know. <laughs> it's not untrue. It's not untrue. Yeah, it's not untrue. <laughs> untrue. Um, okay, you know, because we want to, I'm going to cut a bunch of, yeah. well, I'm going to cut some story. Number I'm going to cut the Battlefront 2. We'll cut 8. We'll go number 9, Poe issue number 15. It's coming out. You just said 14 was, was I, I'm great. I'm a little behind. Um, you had 14. I'm, I'm not too behind. I finished 14. Yeah, just, yeah so you're yeah. one behind. So I'm waiting to get to uh, this one. Yeah, this is one I didn't get. I, I said last week I was going to get to the comic shop. Ken and I did not do that yet. Um, but this is one. Here, right? No, but I am going to catch up with this one, too, because this was, I've had a, not a love-hate, but there's, there's certain uh, issues of Poe that have been just Saturday morning cartoonish, yep. and then there's time that it really pushes canon forward, like you were just talking about. So Issue 14 is one of the best things they've done. I'm going to go check that. I'm going to buy that and this one. Let's, uh, do we have any, we have any breaks today after your show on Facebook today? Any breaks? Uh, I do not. You do not. I do not. All right, well, no one you and you. Jeremy can hold hands and go to the comic show. Well, no, he still owes me sushi. Um, <laughs> I do. All right, so... Poe, you're looking forward to it? Tell me what you got. Yeah, I agree with you, Christian. The, the, the series overall has been just amazing. There's some little moments in all the Marvel comics that are just, you know, they're comic books. They're going to have some fun. We got some vampire people. We got some uh, crazy egg creatures. Yoda fought a mountain. There's going to be things like that. But yeah. uh, at, at its core, Poe is a great character. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, I give a lot of credit to Oscar Isaac for what he did with that character, making him jump off the page and onto the screen. And like I said, issue 14 just sets up Poe as a big player in the resistance, uh, even more than I think I expected, and I'm looking forward to the story continuing. Do you want to go to the comic shop later, or are you busy? Tell you're out of here. Yeah, you're yeah, I'm going on the Guardians stink. ride. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, what's next? Yeah. Uh, well, they uh, we got more comic news here. Uh, Cassian. How Cassian Andor met, met K2SO. You've been wondering about that? You're going to get at the I answer am, in this one shot. It is uh, one issue. That's what one shot means, yep. Jeremy. You yes, know I that? Know. Yeah. I do know that. Yeah. I do know what a one yeah. shot is. When does that come stack? out? Uh, <laughs> I, I that is coming out. Uh, good question. I don't know. Perry, you you're the smart one Thank here. You. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a, a 40 page one shot, which will reveal how Cassian, one of the top intelligence officers of the Rebel Alliance, met K2SO, a reprogrammed Imperial security droid. It's so funny, though, because it's, it's August, like, Christian. August. August. 40 pages. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's like five issues. Yeah, that's not that's not thin. That's <laughs> not yeah. thin at no, all. It How is, much I mean, is that thing gonna a, be? I don't know. It's, it's almost a trade paperback. I'm okay with that because I think some of the some of the other lines that they put out there is like ten pages and then it's over. So this is like four or five issues, and I'm cool with that to find out exactly. There might. K2SO is hands down my favorite mm-hmm. character and the most, the best developed character in all of Rogue One. Um, so I'm very interested to see how they first met and do, are we going to see how he was Imperial and how he transferred over? And like Ken said, we, we find out in the Rogue One novel that he was a separatist. Cassian was mm-hmm. anyway. So I wonder if they're going to explore that. So th- I'm pretty excited about this. Perry, what do you think? I like that. I mean, I, I hear I hear one shot and I'm like, ooh, I should get that because there's only one of them. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm sure if I broke it up into five issues, it's still going to cost me the right. same amount. So that makes no sense at all. But I, I would... I would like to see this story. I want to yeah. see what happens, how they met. And I, I hope it's when they met and when he reprograms him because I want to see if there's any kind of transition rather than just, you know, turn you off, turn you on, and, you know, what, what is still left from what he was before. To Are you getting into any of these comics, or would you get into this one? Uh, th- this is an interesting story because I agree with you guys that, like, I mean, K2SO was the best character in the entirety of Rogue yeah. One. Mm-hmm. Um, I, he just he had flavor, man. He had a lot of personality. I really loved that. Um, I would totally get this. I kind of fell off after Vader down. I really loved Vader down, and then after that, I'm like, okay, I need to just kind of conserve my money. And like you guys said, it's like I don't have time between right. you know all the Collider stuff. 
uh, awesome tacular stuff and my own channel to sit down and actually read. And then Injustice 2 came out, and I, I haven't slept in days. But I, this is an interesting story. I love that, and I love the fact that we've uh, you just said just now, this is when I learned this, that uh, Cassian was a separatist. Because you think about that, all these Imperial guys and Rebel, they were something in the Clone Wars. They were doing something. Yeah. And so this is when you kind of learn, I think, what was it, Captain Panaka from uh, Phantom Menace was right. actually one of the Imperials now? He's like, oh, he's an Imperial guy. One of the, one of the good mm -hmm. guys in Phantom Menace. So they, they all yeah. end up allocating Keep getting Captain different... Captain uh, Imperial Starkers. Yeah, when, it's when, so interesting. When did Star we find that out? Uh, it's like if you go to, uh, on their data bank on Star Wars. .com, Interesting. It's reveal, yeah. Panaka turned. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. I I, it, it, technically speaking, he didn't turn. He Not just turned. He just stayed. He just stayed. Yeah. He, liked the, he liked the health plan. Yeah. Right. Interesting. He <laughs> likes paying taxes. All right. What's next? Uh, you want to move on to Twitter? We got a few minutes left. Yeah. Here. Let's yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, you know what? That. that makes sense because we do. I am actually started reading um, Guardians of the Guardians Will. of the Wills. So uh, Greg Rucka had a pretty good interview about that. So. Let's talk to you guys, and you guys have sent in tweets, and first of all, for everybody watching live, thank you for tuning in, and you guys can always go to Twitter and hashtag Collider Jedi Council. We go through them over the week, we pick some out, and then we talk about them. All right, let's get into it. Ken, what do you got? Hey, we got Javier checking first at Yogi915. Does a Vader comic starting from the end of Revenge of the Sith, which is coming out soon, mean that no Vader movie will be made? Um, No. I don't think that it means that no Vader movie will be made. I don't think they have plans to make a Vader movie. Mm -hmm. I think Pablo Hidalgo says that we already did that in the prequels, which I don't necessarily agree with. No. I think that that's not a Vader movie. I think that's an Anakin Skywalker movie, and I think Vader was the last snippet of it. I don't think we got to see the really cool stuff that we heard about with the Purge and everything else. The, like, the most interesting stuff and why I love Lords of the Sith, the novel, was because it was that conflict. Anakin was still in there a little bit, trying to fight with this Dark Lord of the Sith. And if comics start to do a bit of that in this time period, you can do the same thing that Paul Kemp did in the novel, capture that, and there's still a lot of story to tell. I mean, there's, there's a Darth Vader movie you could do in between episode four and episode five, in between five and six. There's tons of Vader movies you could do if you wanted to do it. I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. Um, I think it, it would be an absolute blockbuster film if they did yeah. it. But it is also a risk to put a movie with the villain as the lead. Suicide Squad was a, did it, and regardless of what you think about the movie, it made a lot of money, but it also had... Will Smith almost served as almost like an anti-hero. has a lot of villainous traits. I get it. It also had Rick Flagg, had these other things, and you could potentially do that if you switched, if you gave... Vader was the lead, and I don't know, someone else, not Obi-Wan per se, but someone on the other side who is the lead and a new character you introduced through it. But I don't think doing a comic ruins any of that. What do you think, no. Jeremy? No, uh, I mean, you can do... Uh, there's years. Just like 20 years in between episode right. 3 and episode 4. That's that's a 20-year gap where a lot of things can happen. I do want to see in one shape, way, shape, or form Vader cutting down Jedi. I would love to see it in live action, but if we get it in comic book, fine. You want to talk about a one-shot? I want to see a one-shot of everything that happened in the temple. Like, oh, yeah. from him marching, he almost gets to the door, and then he sees a bunch of kids, and then he pops out his lightsaber, and that's it. There's a lot of... There's a big path between the, the entryway and the, where the children are hanging out in the Jedi Council area, mm -hmm. I want to see everything that happened there. If they do a one-shot of that, I will get every variant cover and frame it. I want it. All right. What do you think? To Stark. Um, I think one of the ways they could do yeah. it is if they took a Lords of the Sith approach and had, you know, almost like two, two storylines that then converged. But... I don't think they're thinking about making a Vader movie. I don't think the comic has anything to do with that. But... I know we're getting we're getting Han Solo and there's this constant cry for fan favorite characters to get their own standalone movie, but at the same time, let's not forget this is an expanding universe and we got a lot of new characters yeah. from Force Awakens, we got a lot of new characters who are all over the place in in the novels and the comics. There's so many new things to explore and Vader's presence I think can be felt without necessarily having a movie that's just about him. Yeah, it's true. It's the mystery well, of the character. The other thing that I think the reason why they're not going to do a Vader movie is cuz they don't want to keep having to rely on him. And they put him in Rogue One. It was arguably one of the best parts of the entire movie. Every time you go, well, we're going to do a Vader movie. It's uh, The only time you do a Vader movie, if Obi they do an Obi-Wan movie and it bombs. If they do a Han Solo movie and it's terrible. And then they're on, then they're on the ropes and they're like, uh-oh, we need something big. Then you might want to throw a Vader movie into production. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Ken? 
Uh, yeah, I agree with all that. Uh, I, I don't need a Vader movie, man. I don't. I got it. I got it. You got it. I That's got it. it. Rogue One. That's, That's all you it. got. All right. That's all I got. All right. Next so one. let's uh, let's get to the next one. All right. Let's uh, jump on down, Cody, to Ryan. Uh, he asked about our friend Sam Witwer. Uh, do you think he'll have his own original role in a new animated series? Um, yes, I do. I think that Filoni, even though Filoni at the at Star Wars Celebration, like he teases, every, he yeah. teases him every single it. time. I think Filoni knows what he's got with Sam Witwer, and that dude is is not just because he's a friend of the show. He's a very talented dude. Yeah. I mean, he you can he, his Emperor spot on. Everything that he does is spot on. I think it would be silly not to invite him back. He's got a good relationship with Lucasfilm. I still think he's got a good shot and should have a shot at being in the live action film. I mean, the dude mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. he's a charismatic guy. Good looking guy, and he's and he's able to, and he knows the lore and he knows the, the universe. I think that they should try to get him in the movie. Now, Star Killer would be great to bring him back in some way or another. Don't think it's going to happen, especially now that they use the name in uh, right. Force Awakens. But I just like to see him more involved in Star Wars and I think animated. The next one, it'll happen. Ken, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. He's, he's got a lot of talent. Uh, he knows Star Wars. We know that. Uh, we'll see what's going to go with the new animated series. We'll see what it'll be about, but I definitely could see him popping up. I think we just found out that Star Killer builds Star Killer base. That's oh, why it's that's called that. There you go. There you no, go. it won't happen. But he is a good voice actor. I agree. He, he it's not he's not just Darth Maul. He's a lot more. He can be a lot more. So he'll be brought back. Yeah, I agree. And more so than anything, I want him to get his own. I, the key word there is original. I want him to get his own original character that he can build from the ground up. All right, let's do two more. Two more. All right, quickly from our friend James Ito at Ito Man Japan. He says, "What do you think about Benicio del Toro's character, DJ, possibly being Ray's father?" Nah. Nah? Nah, I mean, there's some, I think as I saw somebody mention, which is a cool theory, that he, he knew what she was, who she was, and that the Dark Jedi kind of plays into it, and he sold her off because he knew she could survive. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not going to, I don't want to just, I shouldn't just say nah right away. I, I wouldn't hate it. I just sure. don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I, How do you think? I have no clue. I know so little about his character. I could not come up with anything that would make sense. So I'm just going to say I don't know at this point. <laughs> Every character that gets revealed that's new, two things. Are they Snoke? Are they Ray's parents? That's the, the <laughs> two. That's true. Every time. Uh, yeah. So po- probably not. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, hey, I think DJ, this character, looks great. I'll sell you Heineken, but I don't think he's related to Ray at all. <laughs> Last one, Ken. <laughs> Final one. This is going down to the bottom, Cody. Chris Williams checking in. Do you think we'll see a Lando Calrissian standalone movie with Donald Glover? Not a crazy question. Not a crazy question at nope. all. Donald Glover is hot ticket right now. I nope. mean, he is one, he is a guy that is really doing a lot of great things. Now, it is a matter of how he comes across in the new Han Solo movie. If pe- people really respond to him and the character arc that they set up, we also know we know we love Lando, but mm-hmm. there's more to Lando. There's more that Lando was doing in between that we found out in the comic books alone that you could do with him. And maybe that's something they could absolutely do. I think it is a possibility for sure. I think that we have to wait to see the Han Solo f- film first before we determine that. You're right. Um, but in, in a world of l- just taking a leap, it, it's not crazy. He had his own comic book run for a little bit. So, the, I mean, I like seeing Han and uh, Lando together. But I, if they break off and he does well, bring it on. Yeah, never say never, especially yeah. considering Han Solo is still a year away, and we have to see how he's received in that. But also, I wouldn't be surprised if the folks at uh, Lucasfilm just had, you know, a, a gigantic list of these are all the possible <laughs> right. characters, yeah. and it came up, whether it's an itty-bitty idea or something they're really considering. It's something that they also do. It can make a shared universe inside their shared universe. Yeah. Uh, if they wanted to, they could put Han Solo, the new Han Solo, in his movies and do some stuff there, too. They could, I'm sure Boba Fett's going to show up. They could do, they could play along in side of this and make it more than just a standalone Lando movie, standalone Han movie. They could play inside of this little um, ball here. 100% agree with that. You know, who's to say we don't get a second Han Solo movie and now it's more about him and Lando. Uh, Who's to say that this Boba Fett bounty hunter movie you just mentioned. Lando, he's kind of a scoundrel and a, uh, and a scum right, around the galaxy. Smooth shared scum, universe, little shared yeah, universe. Yeah, absolutely. I could totally see that and be on board for that. Yeah, I love. I would love the idea of like a shared universe inside yeah. this shared universe. Okay, that's everything for me. And happy 40th year anniversary for Star Wars: New Hope and Star Wars in general. Very happy to be sharing that with you guys and with the council today. And first, Miss Grand Moff Nemiroff, Perry Nemiroff, where can they find you? You guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram, at P. Nemiroff. And then, of course, every Saturday, we're doing it this weekend for the holiday weekend, Collider, behind the scenes, 2 p.m. PST. You can watch me uh, be semi-smart and semi-stupid in a mummy escape room. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Mr. John Solo, Jeremy Johns. 
Uh, you can find me at Jeremy Jones on YouTube, Twitter, rest of the internet. You can find my show Awesome Tacular on Go90. Christian and I talk Star Wars. We also do a lot of other fun, nerdy stuff. You'd love it. You should come on by. Mr. Ken, Kylo Ken, Ken Napsock. Hey, great to be here. The answer is 42. I love it. And don't forget, today, today, if you're watching live, 2 p.m. PST on the Facebook page, uh, we have the first episode of Collider's Inside Schmodown with me, the Pit Boss. There's a reason I'm wearing the suit today. Make sure you check out all of us every Thursday. And follow me on Twitter. Get that Collider Jedi Council hashtag going. Let's talk Star Wars. Happy, happy Star Wars anniversary to all of you guys at Christian Harloff here, Twitter, Instagram. Like Ken Mitchell, another thing, too, the schmodown that goes up today is between Jonathan Reese Myers and director Brian Goodman of the new film Black Butterfly. They are going down. It's going down today at uh, 3 p.m., I think, PST. So check that out. Really fun day here. And enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your holiday. May the force be with you. Always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.